Hey guys, are you ready to get outside? Have you been cooped up for way too long and now you don't know how to socially distance and have fun at the same time? Today's meeting, we're going to talk about all of those things, how you do that in your community and even around the world. Geocaching. Have you heard of that? No? Maybe? It's a pretty funny word, but let's talk about what it means. Geocaching, simply put, is a high-tech scavenger hunt. Do you love to go Easter egg hunting? Do you find those a little too easy? I mean, these neon eggs are hidden around in green grass and shrubbery and pine trees. Kind of easy, huh? I think we're a little bit old for that now. Geocaching is actually a more skillful scavenger hunt. So if you are past those egg hunts and ready for something a little more challenging, this activity is the one for you. For more detailed information on geocaching, check out our Google Classroom for more information. Now that you know a little bit about what geocaching is, let's talk about some more information and how to participate. First of all, geocaching. Okay, I know what that is. But what am I looking for? You're looking for something called a cache. A cache is basically a collection of items. They're hidden in a special place. I'm going to show you some examples shortly. But for now, let's talk about how you participate. So now you know what we're talking about. This is how you participate. The cool thing about geocaching is that it's free. It's an activity you can do with your family. And all you really need is a phone or a GPS device. If you really love it, you can become a premium member. If you want to just try it out, you can download the app and pretty much do it for free. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you our PowerPoint presentation. It's going to kind of go over the ins and outs of what geocaching really looks like and how to do it and log on to your computer or on your apps and do it there. Okay, the first thing you need to do, get your phone. Download the geocaching app. Like I said, it's free. All you have to do is download the app. Next, you're gonna create an account. You can sign up through Facebook or you can make an app just for geocaching. All right, the next thing you gotta do is you wanna look for these hidden items around your community. And you probably don't know this, but they are everywhere. On your map, what you're gonna do or on your app is what you're going to do is you're going to click on the small little teardrop in the bottom of your screen. This is the map icon. What's going to happen after that? It's going to self populate and there's going to pop up a bunch of little green dots, and those are your hidden items in your community. Now, some of these can range from really large boxes to really, really tiny, almost microscopic. Not quite microscopic, but they call them micros because they're so tiny. The larger ones are large, and as you get smaller and smaller and smaller, the caches have different things. So after you've gotten on your map, you see everything in the locations that you can be shared, you're going to need to get an adult before you head out on the trail for this adventure. Once you've found the location or the general location of where you're heading, you want to click on Navigate. This is going to give you even more details about where your cache is going to be located. So say it's about five miles from me. I'm gonna click navigate. I'm gonna hop in my car with my adult and we're gonna go on our adventure to geocache. Our map is gonna tell us how many miles we are away. So we're gonna click navigate. It's gonna get a map of where we are and it's gonna follow us and show us which ways we need to go. Once you've gotten pretty close, under a mile, you wanna change that to the top right-hand corner. You have a car and then you have a little bitty compass, a circle, it looks like a compass. Click on that. And your screen will then look like the fifth little phone on this um, PowerPoint presentation and it'll turn to a compass and then you're going to kind of shift in your direction for this one the arrow the orange arrow is pointing east so you're going to need to turn east and walk 212 feet for geocaching it uses satellites and helps us to really figure out where this person put this hidden treasure Generally, this person is going to get, or this app is going to get us between 30 and 50 feet from our hidden treasure or our cache. So what we want to do is once we get 50 to 30 feet away, our eyes are going to be our best tool that we have. If you want to be looking for something that's not an Easter egg, it's not neon, it's going to be hidden and you're going to really have to pay attention. So what you're going to do is you're going to be looking for things that are out of place, something that doesn't look like it should be there. If it's, um, Sometimes I've seen just a really big box. That's a pretty good indicator. A lot of times there'll be a big geocaching sticker on there with a geocaching logo. And that's how you know that that is a cache. 
There are all types of different kinds of sizes and shapes and all of those things. So if you get there 30 to 50 feet away, you looked as far as you could think of and you kind of give it your best effort, but you still need some help. The next thing you're gonna do is there are all kinds of different tabs under that geocaching name and they're gonna give you descriptions. So you can read about the cache because it might be historical. There might be a specific reason that it's planted there. So a description may give you some hints. Also, I said earlier, I always like to check the log to make sure that it hasn't been destroyed or moved or anything like that before I go trying to find it because if it's been moved or destroyed, I'm gonna be wasting my time. I probably won't find it. So activity on here will also tell you if there's been any recent activity. If there has, good. If there hasn't, you might wanna move on to another thing. Attributes will tell you is this area safe? Is it a busy street? Is it wheelchair accessible? Is there parking available? It'll give you all these different indicators to help you have the best image possible. Another thing that's on there sometimes are photos. People like us, us geocachers can add photos. The person that planted the geocache can also add photos. Now, sometimes they don't, and sometimes they're not really good, but sometimes you'll get a good geocache photo of the general idea of where it's at. Sometimes somebody will give you a close-up picture of what you're actually looking at. So that's a good place to look at. If you're looking in waypoints. Those are just different uh, coordinates. So if you wanted to write those down, you can help with that. And then trackables, you can learn more about that on our Google Classroom. Now that you've hopefully found your very first geocache, you want to tell everybody, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, let everybody know that you found your very first geocache. Also, on the geocaching app and the geocaching website, you can let the little community of geocachers, I say little community, it's a very, very large community because it's worldwide. You can do it in your community, you can also do it across the nation and also across the world. So this is a really, really cool, really, really awesome activity that can be done, not just in your own home, but anywhere you go on vacation or anywhere you're traveling. You just pull it up and see what's close. So after you found it, what you want to go into is a spot next to navigate called log. Click on log where we checked earlier to see what everybody else had thought about it. And it gives you three options. You can click found it and write how awesome it was or how hard it was and just give a little note and a little shout out to the person that planted it. You can also click did not find or in geocaching lingo, DNF. And that means you did not find it. And it could be for multiple reasons. Could be that it was just super hard and you weren't to that level yet. It could be that it's been destroyed by someone and you just didn't know that. Um, either way, when you put that note in there, the creator of the geocache can go back and make sure that the geocache is still there. And if it's not, it's been destroyed or taken or whatever, that person can redo it and re put it back in there, post that it's now available, and then other people can go back and check it out. You can also write a note. What I like to do when I go through my geocaching app. When I pick, click found it, a nice little smiley face comes up and tells me I did a good job. Also, if you click DNF, a little bitty blue sad face flips up. And what from time to time, what I like to do is go back to these places and click on the blue faces and like try to make them a yellow face for whatever reason. If I need to contact the creator or if I need to just search a little bit harder. I have been to one cache in Tupelo, Mississippi, which is in our council jurisdiction, where it took me and like four or five friends to search that place. It was there. They confirmed it. It was there. We just had not found it. And it was super hard. So over the course of like a couple months, you know, checking maybe once a week or something, we finally found it. And that was super frustrating, but super, all, but also super um, a happy moment because we found a really, really hard cash. And it was really hard. After you've logged, if you found it or you did not find it, you can also post a note. You can make it your favorite geocache by clicking the heart. You can also add a picture if you want. But just remember, don't give away too many people because we want to make sure everybody has equal opportunity to find these caches and have a good time. You want to make sure when you're done, you put them back the way you found them. That way everybody has a good opportunity to have a good time. Now that we talked about how to geocache, let me show you a little bit of these caches. Like I said earlier, they can be huge, big boxes with cool things inside, and we'll talk about that in a second, or they can be super hard depending on your level as a geocacher. I would call my level as a geocacher moderate to intermediate because I've been through a lot of caches and I've found a lot of really hard ones. Um, but a lot of times they're really easy and they're not really hard. Um, so one of my favorite caches that I 
actually bought and am going to place myself is this little log. And you're wondering how is anybody ever going to like find that? Well, you want to hide it to where people don't just notice it. But also on the bottom, there's a geocaching logo. Remember I told you about the geocaching logo? This is it. And what's going to happen is the top twists off and inside is a little, a little bowl. And this is where you keep your piece of paper that you will sign. If you've made your name, you've created your name, then you will sign your log. We'll see whoever else has signed it because it could be 10, 15 years old. It could be brand new. You'd be the first to sign it, which is really cool. You'd be the first one to find it, which is awesome. Um, or you could be one that's, you know, a list of people that's found it since, you know, the last 10 years. It's just really cool to look at that and add your name to like, hey, I found this. Another one I found, which is kind of easy, was this water spigot. Okay, this is a water spigot. Um, this is not the actual one. I did not take it. Um, but I have found a water spigot before. And the way I knew it was a water spigot in Geocacher is it had a geocaching logo on the top. So be careful when you're going to geocache. You don't want to destroy anything. You don't. You want to leave the place better than you found it, um, like all Girl Scouts. Um, but when I opened it up, there was a little log and a little pencil. If you'd like to learn more about the etiquette and cool tips on how to geocache and the way to do it, now that you've known the basics, you can um, head on over to our real classroom where you can learn all of the things you're going to need to earn the junior geocaching badge. Let me show you some other of my papers. So these, they get a lot harder. These are some of the easy ones and some of the bigger ones. But this one is a random rock that you would just place on the ground. If you flip it upside down, oh my goodness. And then you pop the bottom off like this. This is where the log and potentially a pencil will be found. I always like to take a pencil, writing utensil of some sort with me. That way it all depend on the geocache to have it. Because sometimes they're really tiny and you can't fit a pencil in there. I'm going to show you those in just a second. So some of my favorites that are super, super hard. This one is a just a rock you find on the ground. And then you pop it up, and there is the geocache log. And you know because it has the logo. And obviously, you don't just find a rock anywhere just with a plastic tube on it. This one I found in a tree or something similar to it. I did not take it. You do not take the geocaches. You put them back where you found them. This one, um, similar to this, was hanging in a tree, so it was really good camouflage because the tree was green, and so is my geocache. A couple other ones that I found. These are so cool, and they're super hard if you are not prepared. So I found one that was a penny. Has a little tube at the bottom. This one is kind of like a little bolt screw um, washer combo that could be put pretty much anywhere. But you don't really expect that. It's really making you think outside the box um, when you go geocaching because like, could that be it? Well, let's just try. This is a bolt. And if I unscrew the bolt, there is the geocache. Super fun, isn't it? Especially when you go with a big group of people, like you and your troop could totally do this for a troop meeting and like, it's my favorite, my favorite. Okay, so also this little plate, flip it over. There's the cache. It's just magnetically attached. So I just take it off, sign the log right here, and then just put it right back on. And we're good to go. Another one of mine was this really, really tiny. This one would, would be considered a micro because it's pretty tiny. So you know like the sizes you're looking for. I also found one that was a button. And one that's not odd that I don't have in my car I'm mean, in my group right now. There is one that's like a piece of gum. It's stuck on top, it's like a fake piece of gum and stuck on the top of um, a tube like that. And it's just really cool like to see like, is that really a geocache? Oh my goodness, that's so cool. Some geocaches also have clues to another geocache. So they might be connected. One time I did a geocache that was um, the game Clue. So as you found different geocaches, you got cards. And at the very end, you had to figure out where the, um, where the, um, what we would call the killer was based on the cards you had already drawn. And some of them are historical monuments and they take you to the history, they tell you about the history. Um, in our council, we have three council offices and um, I believe all of them have a geocache there and there's membership information in that geocache, which is really cool. Um, there are a lot of terminology, there's a lot of terminology, there's a lot of terms that you would love to be uh, familiar with. Um, those are also all on the Google Classroom. 
So before we head outside to do some amazing geocaching around our council, um, I want to show you my geocaching kit. Super simple, just a red and blue um, kit. And what I keep in here is a flashlight because you never know where you're gonna be and how dark it's gonna be um, in that spot. I strongly recommend taking an adult and I also recommend going during the day. Do not go at night. Um, it's just a lot harder and it can be dangerous. I also have log books so I can log who went with me where and just making notes for future. I also, some of the trade items I took, I don't know if I mentioned this, but when you are geocaching, if you find big boxes, usually that is a um, take one and leave one or a trade item box. And what that is, is there'll be tons of items from people that have found it before um, where you can take one and leave one. So in this case, I had a found a reflector and I took that and I left one of my trade items. Also found a Lightning McQueen spoon and a little Lego boy. I found a actual geocaching flashlight, which was super helpful later on. And what you can do when you make these trade items is you can create your own little swap, like Girl Scouts do. You can create your own little swap with your troop number and leave those items. I just bought a bunch of little um, chicken erasers because my geocaching name is Tall Chicken. Um, something else I found while I was out geocaching was another geocache that was um, not used and it was out of out of circulation and it was a matchbox and then the geocache log was just right there so it's just a box of matches um and then i found a trinket a little compass in one of the trade items that i had with me so that's there are a bunch of different types of geocaches like i said um you can search pretty much anywhere in your council or past your council to find some of these things um so what you want to do is you want to pull up your own map that's close to your area you're going to find that adult, search around your community, and then we're gonna go geocaching around our council right now. Are you guys ready? All right, let's head outside. Hey guys, I headed outdoors, and for my very first cache, I'm gonna check in Tupelo at our local leadership center. Let's go see what we can find. All right guys, so we're walking uh, down the parking lot of the leadership center, and next to the cookie storage spot, so I've heard that there is a good geocache here with lots of cool membership stuff in it, you know, for girls who may not know about Girl Scouts and how to join, which is, I think, pretty cool. And um, I think right back here, I can see something kind of in that back area right there. So I am going to um, kind of do a little look-see and see what I can find, and we'll see what we can find. I had a clue from a friend that said it was something red. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, I see something right here. It looks like a, oh yeah, it looks like a little hummingbird feeder. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I bet that's it, but I wonder like where, hmm, let me see if I can get something else. Sometimes it's good to bring tools with you, flashlight or, um, you know, just some other things that you might use help you with your finding geocaches. So what I'm gonna do is pop this right here so you guys can kind of watch what I find. Looks like it's tangled under a piece of rope. Oh, here we go. There we go. So this is what it looks like. And let me see if I can well, that's it. Oh, here it is. The top tumbler. Oh, look at there. So that's a really cool, cool geocache. Um, it has a couple things in it. I don't know that I'm going to take them. Like a ponytail holder and like a postcard. But here's the geocache. First one for the day. And there's also a lot of trash over here. So when you go geocaching, um, it's good also to take some, um, a trash bag. So you can pick up trash on the way. Um, you want to leave a place cleaner than we found it, like good Girl Scouts. Also, something I would suggest is to bring Germex and Lysol spray. So when I'm done with this geocache, I'm going to I'm going to go and Germex, and then um, continue to do that on my way, just to be careful and be sanitized. Um, so there you go. There's my very first geocache. All right, ladies. The next geocache that I came upon is in Tupelo as well. 
and it's kind of grown up. It's really, um, I would call it a four or five level as far as terrain is concerned. And um, I'm kind of sizing it up and it looks like it's not gonna be something I'd be interested in doing today. But maybe if I come back with a couple of other people, um, we could find this one, but always be comfortable um, with the geocache you're going to search for. Don't go in any place that you're feeling is a little uncomfortable. Um, if you see trash again, pick it up, but always be careful and mindful of your surroundings. All right, ladies, I have followed my next cache to the neighborhood Walmart, and I have done a lot of caches, so I kind of figured when I was watching the map that it might be in this little spot on the light that's in the parking lot. So we're going to open it up, pull it up. I don't know if you know that you can pull those up, but I only know because of geocache. Um, so I'm going to open it up, see if we see a geocache in there, and hopefully we have a hidden treasure. Sure enough, we do. I've actually not found this one. This one's brand new. So I'm going to open it up. It's got water in it, so it's probably damaged. A good geocacher would come back and fix this, um, put new paper in there, and fix it up for the next group. Um, so I'm going to do that and put it back for someone else to enjoy. And now I'm just going to log my find um, online. So that was a really cool find. All right, ladies, so we are at Tubelo Hardware, and I'm going to show you another geocache that, well, I actually haven't found it, so I'm going to show it to you or not. We're going to go over here and see if we can find it. The clues led me to Tubelo Hardware, so I'm going to go over here and see. Um, so this is what Tubelo Hardware looks like. It's right over here in Tupelo. Uh, this is the part of the council that I am the closest to. So we're gonna go and see if we can find it somewhere. Somewhere around here. Hi. Um, let's see. I'm gonna look at anything. So the clue, if you can't find it originally or quickly, the clue um, kind of told me that to look behind the two hour customer parking, so we're gonna try that. So look for a metal hanging bracket. Okay. See that? There. That's really cool. I'm gonna grab it. All right, that's cool. And I found it. So it's this is a magnetic box like this, and it um, is able to attract magnets. So a lot of times you'll find them on stop signs, or you'll find them on just general signs. And then also something I didn't mention, I don't believe, is these people that are drive up randomly um, and watching do you do what you're doing. Um, those are known as muggles. They're people that don't know anything about geocaching. They may not know anything about what you're doing. So you wanna try to put it back as stealthily as possible um, so they don't remove it or tamper with it at all. So I'm gonna sign this um, online and on the log and I'm going to place it back for the next geocacher. Hey guys, so before the sun sets, I'm going to get my last geocache of the day. And this one is in a beautiful, beautiful park. These are the best places for geocaches to be found. It's um, in public and a safe place to go geocaching. And a lot of people usually um, will hide their geocaches here. So this one said it's somewhere close. Um, I'm going to go check. I think it's going to be somewhere on the fence line, maybe. Or uh, maybe in the tree supposed to be relatively normal size, a match, a match um, container about this big. So looking for that around my spot to see if I can find anything. And you want to look for something out of the ordinary, something that's misplaced or something that doesn't look like a leaf. You can look at the leaves. There's a log here. I could roll it over and see if it's attached to that. Check out the leaves. See if there's anything there. I have done geocaches before, so I think it might be under this little knob that's a little off centered. Can you see that? It's a little, it's not centered correctly. So I'm just gonna twist that. What do you know? I found my last geocache. And so I'm gonna pull this off, same as I have been doing. I'm going to turn the knob and open the cache, sign the log, log it on online, um, and then call it a day. Uh, something to remember, especially now when you are going geocaching, be sure to carry some Germex with you. 
Um, and I sometimes take Lysol with me to Lysol something before I um, touch it. I haven't done that today. So geocaching with um, Germax is super important and super helpful for just your health and well-being. So get that Germax, get all your pencil, get your stuff and your adult and uh, head out there and go geocache. Once again, if you need any more information or want to learn more about geocaching, check out our Google Classroom. The link um, and Google code is in our video already. Um, and we will put that as well in the comments. And we will see you soon. Hope you find tons and tons of geocaches in your area and on your next vacation.